Hey everyone, it's Jessenia. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be walking through the Mink Machine, which is the machine that I personally use to foil items. I know a lot of you have been asking a lot of questions about how to foil and all that jazz, so we're going to get into all of that today. I'm going to walk through the machine, what you need, and a few different scenarios of foiling, if, if that makes any sense. So. This is the machine I use. It is from Heidi Swap and it is called the Mink Machine. So that's what I like to use to foil. It's essentially very similar to a laminator to be quite honest. It just heats up and you feed through the machine. So if you really wanted to, I think you can get away with using a laminator and do the same thing. I personally have not done that, but I have seen other people do that. I just bought the machine for it and I find it really easy to use. So that's what we're gonna be using today. This is the larger of the two sizes. I believe there's a smaller size I haven't seen it in person, so I'm not quite sure how big or small it is. It looks like it's about half the size of this one, but I, I'm not entirely sure. So you can always look it up and check the dimensions for it. I'll try to link everything in the description down below. You can get this from a few different craft stores. I purchased mine off of Amazon. I always find that the easiest thing to do. I'm just a nice, easy online shopper for myself. I think that's always so seamless and convenient. So that's where I got mine from. And so that's the machine. I do have some foil here. You can purchase any type of reactive foil. You don't necessarily have to get the Mink brand machine, uh, the Mink brand foil, but I do have a few rolls, so I thought I would share that with you guys. So that's what I'm gonna be using today. They just look like this. There are a couple different sizes, so that's another thing to keep in mind, especially if you're purchasing online, to just keep in mind what the dimensions are. So these are 12 and a half by 10 feet. Then I also have a smaller one that's only six and a half, or six and a quarter by five feet. So. I think this one is intended for the mini machine and for smaller projects, but I have both just because. And so just, like I said, something to keep in mind if you're purchasing on online, just look at the dimensions because if you're trying to foil something, a larger piece, it's really nice to have the bigger rolls. I prefer the bigger rolls in general. I just think they're easier and you can cut them smaller if you so choose. So I prefer the larger rolls, but that's what I've got there. I don't know if, I I feel like, I can't remember, it's been so long since I've had the machine. I'll, I'll link it all down below, like I said, but I don't remember if the machine comes with any foil or not, or you have to buy it separately, but you can, usually you can get them from the same place. What does come with the machine is a pouch, and this is just a plastic kind of, I don't know, I guess you can say folder, and it just looks like that, and it is kind of seamed on one side, as you can see, you can't actually, pull it apart so it's kind of folded over so that's what it looks like and this is so that you can put all of your items inside of here it kind of sandwiches everything inside keeps them in place and also protects them as they go through the machine so you definitely want to be, make sure you're using this and you're not putting stuff in just by itself because that's what this is intended for and it is nice that it kind of holds all of your items in place so this is the larger size which is what comes with the larger machine I do also have an extra one that is a smaller pouch. I have a few of these smaller ones that I believe are intended for the smaller sized mink machine, but I really like these smaller ones because as I mentioned, this is very similar to a laminator, which I feel like if you're a craft person, you probably at some point in your life used a laminator, but it takes a while for this to feed all the way through the machine. So if you're not really needing the full space of this whole envelope, it's kind of nice to have these smaller ones because if you just have a tiny little thing like this big that you want to put in, you know, into the machine, you can put it in this smaller envelope and it'll go through a lot quicker as opposed to, you know, putting, you know, that little thing in here and waiting forever for this to feed through the machine. It's not forever, but sometimes when you have, when you're just wanting this, it just, it seems like it's taking a long time to feed through. So just something to keep in mind if, if you do get the bigger machine, it's nice to get some extra pouches and you know even some smaller ones, and you can also buy those off of Amazon. So that is that. So let's go ahead and get into the machine itself. I'm gonna pull it forward just a little bit. You do have to plug it in, and there are a couple of buttons on the back there, as you can see. So here you have a forward and reverse button, which I very rarely use. I think I've only ever used it once when I realized that I didn't place something in the pouch correctly and it had started feeding through the machine. I went ahead and reversed it so that it could come out and I could fix it, but otherwise I don't really tend to use that too often. Then here I do have a on and off switch, so 
I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. I think that's on. And then in order to actually activate the machine, you have to press this button in the center. So once you press this, you'll notice that it will beep and you wanna put it on the number that you're looking for. So the way the numbers work here is the their heat settings essentially. So the higher the number, the hotter the machine will get. I generally keep mine at three and seem, I feel like that kind of just works for all projects for me. I believe the directions say that the lighter weight the paper is, the less heat you need and the heavier the weight the paper is, the more heat you need. You can check the directions on that, but I find that three just kind of works for me. And so I just go off of that because it, like I said, it works. Uh, but you'll probably have to test it out on your own and depending on what type of paper you decide to go ahead and put through the machine if it's you know if the foil is not sticking it might not be hot enough or if you know if you see that the the paper is coming out strange maybe it's too hot if it's like buckling or something so just go ahead and play with the heat settings depending on what you decide to put into the machine so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on you can kind of hear it going there and you'll notice that the light is blinking so you want to wait until it stops blinking and it beeps again and that means that it's actually reached the heat setting of the number three. So right now it's still in the process of heating up so you don't want to put anything in it just yet. All right, so you went ahead and heard that beep. That means that the machine is ready and it has reached the heat setting that it is supposed to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try to push this a little bit forward so you guys can see how I am going ahead and doing this. Okay, so I went ahead and pulled out something that I already printed. So the trick with printing, or not the trick, but the way that the machine and the foil is activated is through printing with toner. And toner is, is used for laser printers. So you wanna be able, you wanna make sure you're printing everything that you wanna foil on a laser printer and you're using black ink. So that is the only way that foil will stick. If you use an inkjet printer, it will not stick to that ink. So make sure you're using a laser printer and you're printing in black color so that the foil can adhere to everything. So that's very important. And also one thing to keep in mind, especially if you're using transparent papers, I know this might seem obvious, but I've seen other people do it and I've definitely done it quite a few times when I first started, is to make sure you're putting the printed side face up. I know that can get confusing when papers are on the sheer side and you can see through them. Sometimes, this I feel like it's quite easy because obviously the text would be backwards, but if you're printing a pattern and you accidentally put it on the wrong side, then it's not gonna foil. And also another thing to keep in mind is anything that's not covered with foil but printed with that toner black ink will adhere to this envelope. So I'm gonna show you an example of that. So as you can see here, I think you can kind of see that. This is an old pouch that I had and you can see there's a lot of markings in there of black ink and that's because anything that isn't covered, so if I didn't cover, you know, say this one word with the foil, then once it fed through the machine, everything else would foil, but this little section I left open would actually kind of stain the, the pouch there and sometimes the pouch also will lift some of the ink. So just something to keep in mind if you're, you know, not trying to foil everything, I, you know, it's, it's definitely gonna stick and also ruin the ink on here. So let's go ahead and foil this. I'm gonna take a roll of that foil and I'm going to measure it. I usually just eyeball and do my best to measure. So I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors here and I usually just am able to glide it across, but I'm holding this at a weird angle. There we go. So that is how that looks and the way you want to foil as well is you want to put the foil side facing upward so this side with you know the back is going to go on top of the paper. So I've got in here in my pouch I've got my piece of paper ink side up and then I'm going to place my entire sheet of foil with the foil side up right on top of the paper and then we're going to close the little pouch and feed this through the machine. So let's get this in here. And once you get it in to a certain extent, it will just start to feed. So you can kind of feel it, it sort of hits a little something and then it'll just start to feed the paper through. 
All right, now that that has come all the way out the other side, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the pouch and then we can remove the foils. So that's how that looks. It's always very, very satisfying to remove the foil from the page. And now we have a fully foiled piece of vellum there, which is so, so satisfying. I really love, I, I feel like once you start foiling things, you just wanna foil everything because it's very, very satisfying. So that's what that looks. We just foiled a piece of vellum. So that's basically the, you know, the basics of it. I'm gonna show you a few other little tips and things if you wanna do some, you know, some other little variations and you don't wanna just foil the whole page. So we'll go through a few little scenarios here that I've kind of run into as I've started crafting and wanted to try different things. So let's do a few other little projects. So I'm gonna pull out another piece of that same vellum and I'm just gonna, this, I feel like this might be obvious to some, but I know sometimes we don't always think of these things and you know, even even I feel like I don't really think about things until I have a need for it and I really want to try something new. And so I'm going to go ahead and foil this with two different colors. So I'm just going to foil the left side with rose gold. And I know it looks like I'm gonna be wasting a lot of foil in here, but honestly, I keep a lot of scraps because even if some, if a piece of foil goes through the machine, if it hasn't actually been used, so say for example, this piece here, if, you know, obviously I couldn't reuse that because the foil is missing from it, but if I wanted to use like this little piece here for something really small, you definitely could. So if you have a lot of excess, on a piece that you're using, you can just cut off the ends and cut off the scraps and keep them. A lot of the times I cut off the scraps and I just roll them up into the tube there and I keep them. So when I have a small little tidbit project that I'm working on, then I can just pull from my little scraps in there. So we'll do, let's do rose gold on that side and then I'm gonna try pink on the other side. Actually, I changed my mind. I think I'm gonna try the gunmetal color because I think that'll be a cool combo. So I don't know if this is called gunmetal. I don't know what color this is, but it's sort of a, a gunmetal, sort of purpley, silvery, dark color. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull my pouch in here so that I can lay everything down nicely and make sure it's all where it's supposed to be. All right, let's pull that out of the machine there. And I feel like sometimes the foil comes up with the envelope and sometimes it doesn't, but this one's kind of already lifting. So that one, you got that side and the other side there. So I'll show you that, how it looks. It's very cool to do a couple of different colors and this other color is really nice. It kind of goes purpley and gray-ish. So you've got a couple of different colors there on one sheet. So that's always fun depending on what you're doing. You can kind of mix it up and do different things on different sides. So that is one little thing that I do. The other thing I wanted to share is sort of printing with colors. So the way I print with color, and definitely this isn't the only way to do things, I'm sure. I am not an expert on the machine whatsoever. This is just what works for me and how I use it. So I'm just sharing with you what, what I've done in, you know, in my little crafting experiments. So the way I do with things with color is I will print something first on my inkjet printer. So when you print on an inkjet printer, as I mentioned, that ink does not stick to, or foil does not stick to that type of ink. So that whole image that you're gonna print on your inkjet printer is going to be safe from the foil. So I printed a background image, as you can see here, it's a little bit fair and faint, but it's definitely a background image that is on this piece of paper. And I did that on my inkjet printer. So then what I did is I took this piece of paper and I fed it into my laser printer and I went ahead and printed out black ink lines. So that's what that looked like. and. I printed that out, again, like I said, on the laser printer so that anything that was in the black lines 
with the laser ink would be foiled and then I would have a clean background image that didn't get foiled and would just stay intact. So I basically print twice. I print once on the inkjet and the second time on the laser and you do wanna print the laser second. So that's kind of how that works. I did, as you can see, cut this out because I'm making a bookmark with this little item here. So I went ahead and cut it out already. So we're gonna foil this piece here and this is just on regular cardstock. I find regular cardstock is the easiest paper to foil. It's the least, I don't know, finicky I guess you can say. I'm gonna go ahead and take that same gunmetal-ish color and I don't know which way do I wanna do this. Let's just go that way. All right, let's go ahead and pull this piece out. I'm gonna go ahead and lift up the foil. I'll give you guys a closer little shot of that there. This doesn't move everywhere. It's always the best, most satisfying thing. So as you can see there now, it's foiled and everything that I printed in that second printout with the black ink is what is now foiled. So that's what it looks like. And then as you can see up close, the background image has not, you know, held on to any of the foil. It's still there and you've got something kind of in the background. That's kind of, that's quite nice. So that's another option for you guys if you're trying to, you know, to print something that has a, a background and then you're putting foil on top of it. So that's the other thing. And then I have one more thing to share with you guys. So this is something again that I've printed a background and I'm going to be foiling a few things on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this into my laser printer so I can get the, you know, the foil lines printed out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and printed out the Expecto Patronum, so some lettering on the laser printer so we can go ahead and get this foiled. So I'm going to pull out my pouch again. I am going to put this in here and we're gonna just go ahead and keep using that same gunmetal color. And so the what I'm doing with this here is I'm going to be printing out two separate colors of foil, but sometimes when you're trying to do two different colors of foil, but there are two, the item that you're doing is kind of a little bit more intricate and they are kind of more, I guess, connected or intertwined with each other, you can't really you know, cut the foil the way I did on that first sheet where I just did half and half. You can't really cut it out to how you want it. You have to print it twice. So we're gonna kind of, you'll see when I'm when it's all said and done kind of what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and foil this first little bit here. Okay, let's pull that out of the machine and gonna pull up the sheet of foil. So like I said, because there's so much open space in, in this sheet here, as you can see, I mean, I really didn't use a whole lot of it. So if I wanted to, I could definitely cut out these pieces that didn't have any foil used and reuse it again. So just something to keep in mind if you're trying to save the foil, because it does get a little bit much when, you know, there's a lot of waste in, in certain projects that you're doing. So. Anyhow, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to feed this whole sheet back through my laser printer to get the second color of, the second color done basically. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna do that and it is going to print crop marks on the sides here and because I don't want those to be um, loose in here, like I mentioned, anything that you don't wanna foil is going to get kind of stuck and stain the item there. So once I print those crop marks, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this out with my silhouette, which is why I have the, I'm gonna print crop marks on this last um, little print run there. And so I'm gonna come back and everything's gonna be in little circles. Okay, so I am gonna show you guys what I did. So here, as you can see, I've got some another little set of black lines in the background with that little image. And I just kind of printed it on, on top and it doesn't always register correctly. When you're putting, when you're feeding things through printers multiple times, it's not always gonna line up perfectly. So just something to, you know, 
to bear in mind. Usually I try to do images that don't require, you know, exact al alignment placement because it gets a little bit frustrating if you're trying to do something absolutely perfect. But anyhow, that is what that looks like. And then as you can see, I just went ahead and cut them out. So I'm gonna stick these in actually the smaller pouch. So I'm gonna take the smaller pouch and we're just gonna do one of them. So like I said, this is nice for little projects like this. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some pink foil this time. And so because the other piece is, you know, the other part is already foiled, this isn't gonna stick to it and it's just gonna stick on the new black lines that I went ahead and printed out. So I'm gonna cut this into a little, whoops, a little square there. And I'm gonna place this right on top and feed it through the machine. Okay, I'm gonna pull that out and we can see what this turned out looking like. Pull that out of the pouch and then we can do that together. So hopefully you guys can get a good look at that. I know the colors are a little bit similar, but I've got the, what is it? The gunmetal color for the, the wording. And then I've got the pink on the other item there. So two different colors. And that's sort of how you do that when they're a little bit more intricate. I find that it's best to run them through the printer twice and foil them separately. But of course, if you're doing something that's a little bit simpler and more spaced out, you can use the first method that I showed of just kind of cutting the foil in two separate pieces and feeding it all through together. So just a few little tips and tricks. One other thing that I almost forgot but I wanted to mention is that I have been successful laminating things with this machine. It was something that I was wondering for a while but I was kind of scared to try it and potentially ruin the machine but I don't guarantee this but I have tried it and it works and I'll show you how I do it is laminating with this machine. So. What you want to do is you want to take a laminating pouch, which looks actually very similar to the pouches that are, you know, that the mink has, but they are different. These are specifically laminating pouches, so this is a different item, but it's very similar in how it opens and such. And so what I do is I toss my items into the laminating pouch. So I'm just going to laminate this because I have it here, even though I don't need to laminate it. I'm just going to laminate it just so that I can share this with you guys. So I'm going to place that in there and I close the laminating pouch and instead of feeding the pouch directly into the machine, I actually put this pouch inside of the protective pouch that is intended for the mink machine. So I put the entire laminating pouch with my items into here and then I feed it through the whole thing the same way I would as if I was going to foil something. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and take out my pouch here. So as you can see, it didn't stick to this. It came out really nice and clean and this whole piece is a nice and beautifully laminated as you can see there. It actually, to be quite honest, laminates better than the laminator that I used to own. This is just a five mil laminating sheet. So in case you're wondering what I used, it's a five mil and I haven't really used any other thicknesses, so I'm not sure how they would work or if you have to maybe change the heat setting, but this works beautifully. I find that it it does a really, really great job and I found this out because I my laminating machine actually broke and so I decided to test this out and see if it worked and it did. So it's kind of nice because if you don't want to have multiple machines, this one can kind of do both, so that's nice. But yeah, just a little tip there. Definitely make sure you put it into the protective pouch that the mink comes with so that you don't, you know, nothing gets jammed or ruins the machine and moves around. Cause I think that protective pouch really, you know, keeps everything locked in place so that nothing is kind of moving around as it's going through the machine. But just a little something there in case you guys were wondering the same thing I was that yeah, that works too. <laughs> so I hope that was fun for you guys and gave you guys a lot of ideas on how to foil if this is something that's totally new to you. I will link the machine and the foil down in the description below. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you all so much for watching and I will catch you all in my next video. Bye.